Hi folks, uh, so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to do a little parametric modeling um, exercise based on this whistle here and it's very much an introductory um, exercise into SOLIDWORKS as well, okay? I'm going to teach you a little bit about sketching, uh, extruding, cuts and shelling as well to be specific. So just to get that started, I'm going to go over here to the next page, it's one of the older kind of exercises that was previously done. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off, I'm just going to zoom in here. And it tells us here, create a sketch on the front plane using the circle and line commands shown. So this is what we're going to start. We're going to sketch this. Then it says, use trim to remove the arc and line. So we can see here, uh, what we want to do is obviously, if you look over here to here, look at the difference. We're going to use the trim command to cut this and this. And then it says, make this line the and the origin coincident by using add relation. So you can see this line here and the origin, we want to add a coincident to obviously line them up. And then we're going to apply the dimensions as shown, okay, 40, uh, four millimeters, three millimeters between this point and so on, and then four and a radius of 10. So that's what we're gonna start with. And then it says, extrude the sketch using extrude boss base, mid plane is the end condition and distance of 80. Okay, so that's what we're going to do to start off with. So in my SOLIDWORKS, I'm gonna go file new, part, and click okay. So that's just going to load up for me there now. Now I'm in my modeling screen here. So what I want to do is I want to select the front plane and select sketch. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go up to my sketch tab, which is up here. Click on this, okay, if it's not active for you already. And then I'm going to select the circle command. Now the one I want is simply circle. Now that I have the circle command, always starting on your origin, click, let go, click again. Now, what I want to do is I want to add a, a sorry, uh, a line command to that, not a dimension. So just a normal line command here, I'm going to select this. Now you have multiple options, line, center line, midpoint. I want to start with line. So left click on that, it's now selected. And from the top here, you can see the little node there. If I just zoom in a little bit, you can see the way that little yellow node there, that goes orange. When it goes orange, I'm on the actual point. So click, I'm going to drag out here, and I'm going to do roughly the sketch. Click. Doesn't matter how long it is, click. Now I know it kind of comes in here at an angle. Just be careful, you can see there the yellow line that is coming on the screen. If you add that, that's essentially saying that it's going to be a tangent. You can see there it's a tangent to the circle. Now by making that tangential, we, that could, we could struggle later on with obviously doing the dimensions. So just make sure it doesn't have any kind of like relations anywhere else. So I'm gonna do it about here, I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to bring it in to the center point, click. Now, to deactivate your tool, press escape. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my sketch command, and in my sketch tab, I'm going to go to power, or sorry, trim entities, which is this one, and the one I want to use is power trim. And now the bit I want to cut, if you click and hold, left click with your mouse and hold down the left click button, drag a line, you can see through this point and this point. And there we go. And you can see here now the area is fully enclosed, it has gone gray. The problem is, it is under defined. We have to add dimensions to this drawing to turn it from blue to black to make it fully defined. So in my sketch tab, I'm going to go to my smart dimension. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to dimension this circle. Click on the circumference. Once let go, click again. And my radius is a 10. Okay, so it's a radius 10. Now the distance from here all the way to over here is 40 millimeters. Or alternatively, you could select this line, drag it up. And I know I want, because the radius is 10, I want that line to be 30. So just to explain how I came up with that, that distance from the node here to the end, that line is 30. My radius here is 10. If I just go back to the sheet, you can see here, they have a distance of 40 millimeters from the end to the end, whereas I've just marked from the node to the end, which was 30. Absolutely fine. Now I'm going to do a four and a three and then a four. So this distance here is to step down four millimeters. I want the distance from this point, very important you have the point, click on the point, click on the line, drag out, I want that to be three, and I also want this line to be, it's very important now, you get it when it's like this, now I don't want the horizontal length or I don't want the vertical height, I want the angular length, and I want that to be four. Now, you can see here we're still under the point. That is because I want this line to be essentially coincident with the center point. So I want that line to line up with the center point. To do that, what you're going to do is, on your keyboard, you're going to hold down the shift key. Now the shift key is the arrow key above the CTRL at the bottom left. So if I click on the line, 
okay make sure you don't click on the midpoint of the line or anything like that just click on the line itself you can see there it's gone okay and now i hold down shift and if i click on the center point of the circle a little relation is going to come in here add relations and it's giving me a couple of options midpoint coincident fix i want to select mid or sorry coincident and you can see there it is lined up now with the center point i'm happy with that except with the green arrow and there we go you can see our sketch now is fully defined okay it's gone from all blue to all black fully defined down here very important there so the next thing i want to do is i go to my features tab features will allow us to uh, convert something from 2d to 3d so extrude boss base is what i want to use so i'm going to select this and a little tree or a little window will open up here and you can see here direction one it's saying blind now if you remember on the sheet it said we wanted to select mid plane so select the down arrow and you've got multiple options here but the one we want to do is mid plane and notice that my sketch is now in the middle and it's after going out to the right and to the left the distance i want it to be set is 18 millimeters so press 18 and you can see there if it's 18 millimeters and i use mid plane that means it's gone nine to the right and nine to the left and i accept that with the green arrow and there we go that is the first part of the whistle done there okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to uh the second part of this so just go back to my sheet here and down here a little bit so we've done this bit 18 millimeters now it's saying rename the feature as whistle body i'll do that in a second create one half of the sketch on the top surface so it's asking us to select the top surface up here and what it's asking us to do is kind of from about here draw a triangle that is 20 long 1.5 wide and connects up there like that and we also want to draw a center line going across here and then it's telling us sketch sorry sketch center line and mirror the three lines so mirror these three lines one two three very important read the information three lines okay about the center line to create the other half and smart dimension okay when we do that then it's going to tell us i'll just check yep it's going to tell us then cut extrude using this uh using this sketch select up to next as the end condition so that's the next thing we want to do so on this surface the top surface is the one we want to sketch on so i select the surface and i select sketch it usually will bring you in looking straight at it perpendicular so in my sketch area i'm going to come over here to my line tool select the center line and i'm going to start on the origin so i'm going to select this point bring it all the way to the end make sure you've got a little horizontal relation there notice the little yellow symbol at the side where it's a little line going to the right or left and right that shows a horizontal relation go right to the end happy with that now my tool is still active to deactivate it press escape now the next thing i want to do is in my sketch i'm just going to get a normal line now not a center line and what i want to do is i want to draw a triangle okay now very important you can see here see the little node in the middle i do not want to select that because if i select that that means the line where i started is going to be fixed to that point so either start to the right of the node or the left of the node only ever start on the node when you want to start in the middle of the line in this case i do not so i'm actually going to come out to about here i'm going to do a line go right into the node which is at the corner point i'm happy with that select i'm going to come down here any random distance somewhere along the line click and then bring it back home now the next thing i want to do is i want to apply dimensions notice the lines are black and blue it is not fully defined it is underdefined. so when i go into my sketch smart dimension select this edge i want that to be 20 millimeters it's close enough and i want this line to be 1.5 okay now there we have it now instead of drawing all that again i can use this center line to mirror about so if i go into my sketch tab and i go to mirror entities and i select that notice the mirror entities box over here on the left hand side of your screen entities to mirror are the items i want to be copied so in this section when it's highlighted blue i'm going to select this line this line and this line notice how all the lines are after being populated in here alternatively a quicker way than that was if i selected in the area it should highlight all three lines as well now copy is selected that's fine that usually always be selected and the mirror about is the line i want to copy it about so i'm going to select this box now and now i'm going to select this line the minute i select this center line you can see here the triangles come in at the bottom when i'm happy with that accept it with the green arrow now there's our sketch just going to rotate back to a 3d view there now and what i want to do now is i want to go to features instead of adding something on 
I'm now going to take it away, which is extrude cut. Now, that would actually be fine there, mid-plane as the condition, because it stayed as the condition that I used previously. But what we want to simply do is we want to use the condition up to next. So if I select up to next, what will happen is that will uh, extrude cut uh, the object until it reaches the next surface closest to it. And you can see that's the next surface there. So I'm happy with that, except with the green arrow. And there we go. Very easily done. Okay, that's our object there. Now what we want to do is we want to move on to the next part. So if I just go back out to the object here, I'll actually turn on the lights, guys, sorry. Apologies there. Just to make it a little bit more visible on the screen. So it says here, cut extrude uh, using this sketch line. So we've done that. And now what we're going to do is rename the feature second cut. So I'll go back in and rename those in a second. Now what we want to do is we want to apply a one millimeter fillet to the top edges of the whistle. And you can see here a one millimeter fillet here and here. And rename the feature as top fillet. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. So I'll rename my features first of all. So the first feature I want to rename was this one. So if you click on it and press F2, it'll allow you to rename. And we want to rename this as whistle body. Very good habit to get into is renaming your features so that you can actually find them, okay, rather than just seeing series, cut, extrude, one, two, and so forth. And this one was second cut. I'll just follow it on the sheet. Second cut. There we go. So there are those features renamed. So click on the feature and press F2 at the top of your keyboard. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to add a fillet. So your fillet is in your features. So in your features tab, if you come over here to fill it, you have two types. If you click on the down arrow, you'll be either a round fillet or a chamfer, which is an angular or cut. But we're just going to do a fillet. So in the fillet section, you've got a couple of types here, but the one we're just going to use here now is this one here, a constant size fillet. And I want that to be one millimeter. So I come down here to the variables uh, radius parameters. I want that to be one millimeter. And I want to select this edge right here. Actually, it might be, just be certain. There we go. And sorry, that's it. Apologies there. I had the wrong one selected. I'll just go through that again. So features tab, fill it, select fill it, and make sure you have this one not selected. Okay, this one is a variable size fill it. The one we want to select is a constant size fill it. Okay, hover over them and they will tell you what they're called. Constant size, variable, uh, face fill it, and then we have a full round fill it. We want constant size. Then come down here, change 10 millimeters to one. And then I'm simply going to select this edge right there. Okay. I'm also going to go to the opposite side and select this edge. When I've done that, I'm going to accept it with the green arrow. You can see there I've got curved surfaces now at the edge. And I'm going to rename this feature. So I'll click on it, press F2. And that is renamed as top fillet. Okay. So there's the top fillet done. Now what we're going to do is we are going to add on a handle here at the back of it. Somewhere where you would attach maybe a little string or something that would go around someone's neck and attach onto the whistle. So if I just refer out to this. <clears throat> so this is the next thing we're going to do. So it says here, create the sketch below. So you can see the sketch here on the front plane using line, add relation and smart dimension. So you can see here from the center, we have a center line going out. And then we're going to draw this shape. So I have a line which is actually, if I zoom in here, this is really important. You can see here we have a coincident relation right there. So essentially this line here has to touch the circumference of the original circle. Okay. And from there we have another line out six. We have clearly a, maybe a center point arc here with a radius three. And then a line here that is looks to be tangential there. I've got a tangent relation. Okay. So that's what we're going to do there. We're going to create that sketch and we're going to be most likely revolving it. So on the front plane, if I just select the front plane, notice that the front plane is in the middle of my object. That's where I'm sketching. So I'm going to select front plane, sketch. Now in here, don't worry that you're in the middle of the object. Go to your sketch tools, select the line command and select center line. From the origin, click, drag out, make sure it's a horizontal line you do, click again. Does not matter how long that line is. Press escape to deactivate the tool. Now I'm going to go to my sketch tab again, and I'm going to do a vertical line somewhere on the center line inside of the circular area. 
So click in here. I want to drag a line up until it maps onto the circumference of the circle. And make sure also that it's vertical. Like that maps onto it, but it's not vertical. So come down until you get it vertical there. You can notice the vertical relation. Click. Okay. I'm going to press escape to deactivate the tool. Press return to activate it again. And what I want to do now is I want to do a line out here. Click. Press escape to deactivate. So notice there. I think I have a coincidental relation there. I just want to be certain. I want to do that line just once again. Apologies. Sketch. Line command. That looks fine there, yeah. Happy with that. Now what I want to do is I want to do a center point arc. So I'll go in here to your sketch commands uh, and I'm looking for a center point arc. So select this one. Start the center point anywhere. Click on that point anywhere along this line and then I'm going to come out here to this point here. And what I want to do is I'm going to do a rough arc like that. Happy with that there now. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I want a line to be tangential to that. To go from here all the way down to here. So I'm going to click on the sketch tool, uh, sketch tab I should say, sorry, and select line. And now I want to start a line from here and I'm going to make it tangential like that. Now there's a couple of ways. You can see it's uh, automatically giving me the tangent line like that. Or I could actually do it out here like this. Okay, press escape. Now clearly I want that line there to touch this circle or this arc tangentially. So to do that, you can add a relation. If I select the line, hold down the shift key, which is the arrow button above CTRL at the bottom left of your keyboard, and click the arc as well, and then click on tangent over here to add relation. There you go. Now notice there, obviously, this is after moving up. Absolutely fine. That is the rough shape we want. Now just before, just refer it out to it here, that's the rough shape we want. But obviously I need to do a little bit of tidy up. So I go up here to my sketch commands, and I'm going to select trim entities. There's my trim entities, power trim. I'm going to click and hold, left click, to get rid of this section. Zoom in, get rid of that section. And that's my rough shape there. Now the next thing I need to do is apply dimensions to it. So my dimensions are sketch, smart dimension. I want this line here to be six. I want this line here to be five. And I want the radius of this section to be three. And notice how the sketch has gone from blue to black and notice how I've got the obviously the <coughs> excuse me there the coincident relation inside here as well okay so that's what we wanted there now if I just refer out to my sheet okay I'm gonna turn the page over so out there and we're nearly there I now want to use it saying here use revolve boss base to create the area so you can see here we're trying to create a little section on here Okay, use Revolve Bob base, uh, Boss Base to, correct, uh, to create the area, rename the feature as Raised Area. So that's what we want to do now. So I'm essentially taking that sketch there, okay, and my sketch is fully defined. I'm going to go to my features, and now this time I'm going to select, you can see this one here. We've used this one, Extrude Boss Base, we've used Extrude Cut. Now we're going to do a revolve. Now a revolve means we need a line to rotate it about. And luckily enough for us, it's already automatically selected. So I'm just going to delete that there. Now there's our sketch in here. Now note this, our axis of revolution. Axis of revolution is the line we want to rotate it around, okay? And my revolution degrees is a full circle, 360. So if, and I want blind condition as well. So what I want to do is, in my axis of revolution, now I want to select this line. That's the line I want to select. And when I select that line, there we go, you can see there, it's after making that lovely little shape there. However, if I was to select a different line, come up here and delete, and let's say I selected this line, you can see here it will do a revolve, but it's obviously not the one I want. Okay, and it's kind of nearly revolved into the object. So that's not the one I want. Also, you could change the degrees here to say 90. And notice it only does a quarter of a circle, or a quarter of a, a revolve. I want it to be the full revolve, so I want that to be 360. Now that's obviously just a useful tool if you're ever doing something else. And I want my axis of line to be not that this line, I want my axis line to be this one. And there we have it. There's the object. I'm happy with that. I will have to select it. And there we go. That's the object created. Okay, and we're going to have to do a little bit of modeling inside there just to finish off in a second. 
Now that guy there, it said to rename the feature as raised area. So I'll rename the revolve, click on it, press F2. I want to name it raised area. So that's that section done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hollow out the inside of it. So which is called shelling. So what we want to do is it says, um, sorry, I'll come back up here. Uh, it says, shell the whistle with a wall thickness of 0.5 millimeters, remove one face. And what it's going to do is we're going to use the shell command, so it's going to be in our features, and we want to select this face to shell, and we want to set the distance to 0 0.5, okay? And then it says, rename it as shelling of whistle. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is, this is the face I want to select, but I'm going to go up here to my, <coughs> excuse me, features toolbar, and I'm going to look for shell. Okay, so if you can't find it, you might just have to search for it. And our shell command is over here on the right hand side. So I'm going to select this here. And you can see here it's already telling me a distance. It just automatically puts in 10 millimeters. I don't want 10, I want 0.5 or 0 0.5 if you want. And now it's telling me I want to select parameters inside in this box here. So what you're going to do is you're going to select this face. So when you select that face, now what I would advise you to do, you can see I've selected the face, it's gone in here, I would advise you to select show preview. And you can see there now that I've done show preview, it's after shelling the whole object. Okay? Now, before we actually do that, what I would actually advise you to do, I'm just going to press this X on that before I actually do it. Back in here, I'm actually going to change something ever so slightly. Notice that we have solid bodies one inside here in this section, okay? Now for a solid body, in this section here, I want this body to be separate from the whistle, okay? So when I actually made that in my raised area, if I uh, click on this surface and click edit feature, note that it says merge results and the merge result box is ticked. Now, essentially, that merge result, if I merge it, it means it's part of the whole body, okay? If I untick that, okay, that means that this feature that I'm creating, this revolve, is now not part of the whistle, okay? It's not part of the whistle. It's essentially I'm making another body, okay, and they're two separate bodies. So by unticking the merge result, watch this, when I click the green arrow, it should now say that I have two solid bodies. Note one is the top fillet, which will usually take the, uh, the name of the previous thing before it, and we have the raised area. They are two separate entities. So watch when I click raised area, it highlights this. When I click top fillet, it's the whole surface there. Okay, that's something just to be aware of, obviously, okay, um, going forward. So I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, it's a little change I've made from the actual um, sheet, but that's my raised area. But now watch when I do the fillet now, or sorry, not the fillet, the shell. When I go into the shell this time, and I select 0 0.5, and I select the face, it will, and I'll say show preview, it will only shell out the actual whistle part. The last time when I actually did it, and we had merge result in, and it was ticked, it also shelled out this portion of the whistle here. Okay, which is absolutely fine, but I did it just a slight little change there. I'm happy to do that, except the green arrow. And there you go, you can see inside of the whistle there. If I turn on my sectional view, which is this guy up here, you can see there, it has only shelled out the inside portion there. Okay, just inside here. So I'm happy with that. Now, what I want to do next, <clears throat> refer back out to my sheet here. The next thing it's saying, and I'll rename that in a second, uh, shelling of whistle. It says here, create a sketch on the top surface of the whistle using rectangle. And you can see it wants me to create a rectangle that is 20 millimeters from the front, and it's going from obviously the ends to the, or sorry, the width to the width, and it's six millimeters wide. And then it's telling me to extrude cut with this sketch to create the opening, select up to surface as the end condition, and rename it as opening. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. And before I do that, I'm going to rename this feature shell, click on it, F2, and I'm going to call it shelling of whistle. I'm happy with that. Now what I want to do is I want to select this top surface, click on it, sketch. Now what I want to do is I want to start a sketch going using a rectangle. I'm going to start my sketch about here. Now just to show you that again, sorry. Sketch, rectangle, corner rectangle, very important. I'm going to start my sketch kind of in line with this, but about 
If I zoom in there, you can see, if I zoom in right in that corner there, so you can see where I'm zooming in here. I'm going to start it in line with that. Notice how the line is coming up. Click there. When I'm happy with that, I want this to come down and just be on this line as well. Now what I want to do is I want to go to my sketch tool, smart dimension. I want this to be 20 millimeters away from the front. And I want this to be, I'm trying to think here now, six millimeters long as well. There we go. Okay, so you can see there, I'm after putting that in correctly. And I'll just check it on my sheet just to be certain. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, and we're going to continue on now. And I think it says then features, extrude cut. And I just want to say up to next. Okay, and if I accept that, cancel. And flip side the cut. What I want to say is up to next or up to surface. And if I select the surface, actually, I'll see. Yeah, that will actually work better. Apologies for that. No, I'll just check that. There we go. That's actually what we want. So just on that there, guys, I'm going to re uh, recap that step. I'm going to delete the feature by right-clicking on it. Now, in the sketch, you can see my sketch is there, but it's in gray. Notice how it's kind of over the corners as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go click on the sketch and click Edit Sketch brings us back into it. Now for that there, um, this is an older version of SOLIDWORKS I'm using to, to model this object from. Sorry, this version is newer than the actual sheet when it was made. So what I want to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go extrude cut. And instead of saying up to next, which is what it asked me to do, but you can see there it's actually uh, bringing the object the whole way down. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change that to up to surface. And now it's asking me to select the surface to put it into. And the surface I'm going to select is the inside of the whistle, inside here, this face. You can see the face I've selected is just inside the whistle. By selecting that, that's as far as my cut is going down. Now that I've done that, I'm going to accept that with the green arrow. And there you go. That's that portion of the whistle after being cut away. And you can see there, clearly, we can see inside the whistle now. Okay, so that's uh, that portion of it done. Okay, so we've done that bit. Now, I think I actually forgot something previously. I'm going to call that opening. I'll rename it. But I did forget something previously. Apologies for this. Where I had to do a curve at the front of it. So I'm just going to go back and do that curve there now. So it says here, create a sketch on the top surface of the whistle using center line and center arc. And we want the curve to be tangential and a radius of 25. So to do that, I'm going to select this top surface here. Do a sketch. And I'm going to do a center line. I'm going to do it from the origin all the way out to the end. And now the next thing I'm going to do is in my sketch tab, I'm going to select a center point arc, creating the center point somewhere on here. It doesn't matter where I'm going to do it about here. And I'm going to create a center point arc that is on there. You can see here now. There we go. Sometimes that happens in the note. There we go. I want to do an arc from that part to that line there. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want that arc to be tangential with this surface here. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to select the arc, hold down the shift key, select this line here, the edge, and then select tangent. There we have it. Green arrow. Next thing I want to do is I want to give that a dimension, smart dimension, I want the radius of that arc not to be 18.14, I want it to be 25. You can see the center has just moved back. Now the arc has gone fully defined. Now I'm going to use that arc to cut away the front of it to give it a curved feature. So if we go to features, extrude cut. Now it's very important here, when you extrude just using extrude cut, just using a line, note the direction of the arrow. See the arrow is pointing outwards. If that arrow, I'll try and select it again here. Sometimes it's going to be a little bit tricky. There we go. If that arrow was flipped this way, what would happen is that everything this side of the line would be cut. But I don't want that. I want it the other way. So there we have it. You could also flip side to cut over here. I'm happy with that. And all I'm going to say is blind is absolutely fine, okay? Or you could just say true all, either way. And I'm going to stick the green arrow to accept. 
And you can see there now we have a lovely curved surface at the front. Okay, so that's that part of it done. I'm going to rename these, this one here, click on it, press F2, this is opening. I'll actually call it whistle opening. And then for this one here, um, I'm trying to think what we'll call it, cut extrude, second cut. And that was the second cut there. So I'll call this one third cut. And I'll say F2, sorry, third cut. And there we go. So there's that portion of it done. Now what we want to do is we want to move on to the last little bit on this whistle project. <clears throat> Let's bring you back out here. So you can see there on the sheet, apologies, the lights have gone out again here, guys, in the room. It says here, create a sketch on the front plane. Okay, and you can see my origin here and the distance from the origin to the center of a circle that has a diameter of two is 12 millimeters. And what we're going to do is we're going to extrude cut that using the mid plane and the end condition, uh, end condition and then 10 millimeters, okay, as the distance. And we'll rename it as whole. So on the front plane, I'm going to select front, select sketch. I'm going to go to my sketch tools, start with a center line. From the origin, I'm going to do a line out here like this. Doesn't matter where, I'll just do it to there. Happy with that. Now on that uh, line, I want to do a circle. So somewhere in around here. And then I'm going to, after doing that circle, go to my smart dimension. I want the diameter of that circle to be two. And I want the distance from the center to the origin to be 12. So click on the center of the circle and your origin. And I want that distance to be 12. And you can see the circle has gone from blue to black. It is fully defined, noted down here. Now, you can see the circle is in the middle of my object. I'm going to go to my features, extrude cut. I want to do, instead of true all as my condition, I want it to be mid plane. And I said, I think the distance was 10. And that seems to be enough there. Nine probably would be enough as well, but we'll just set 10 and click the green arrow. Note there that we now have a, a space for our whistle to fit inside. Okay, or sorry for the maybe the uh, the tread that would or the, the string that would go around the coach's neck to obviously put that in between so that they can attach the whistle around their neck. Okay, I'm going to rename that as whole. Accept that, and then the last thing it says is on the sheet. Let's refer out it here. Apply a chrome stainless steel finish, and then we're going to save that chrome stainless steel finish. Now, note this as well. What I'm going to do here is. I've got two solid bodies, if you remember. I've got the third cut, which is what it's now called because that's the last thing I named or did this little feature. And I've also got the hole, which is now named as hole because that's the last thing I did on this solid body. They are two separate features. So what I can do now is I'm going to actually give this a chrome finish and I could give this a color finish. It makes no difference, okay? This is just a playing around with a little bit on appearances. So I'm going to select this surface, go to my appearances, and I'm going to say, body. Now that will just do this body. I'm going to go to my appearances. I'm going to go to metal because I'm looking for chrome. And I think what we're looking for is chrome stainless steel. So I've got chromium plate. Have we got it here? Sandblast is matte chrome. Chromium plate. Satin finish chrome. Sandblast is chromium plate. So as I said, this is a previously, this is an old enough one. So I'm just going to do chromium plate. Except that with the green arrow. Or sorry, except that, click the green arrow. Now note that this section here, the whole body, is a chrome plate. So on this one here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this body, this surface, select body, and I'm going to add something else to it. Now this is just a bit of playing around. I'm going to maybe, I might choose a brass. Now this would not work at all, but you can see there I kind of got a gold there now. I might go gold, I might go copper. Might send out a little bit more. There we go. Something like that. Absolutely fine. So I'm just going to say, I think it was brushed copper. I might do a polished copper. There we go. Accept that with the green arrow. And you can see there, now we have that portion of the whistle. And you can see there when I went to edit them, this part, when I put it on the body for this one, it didn't affect the body for this one and vice versa on the other side. Okay. So that's the actual project done there, guys. A little bit in that, okay. Uh, some important sketching tools using the relations, and then you're after using the shell command, 
which will obviously hollow out the object. We've used various cuts and we have used an extrude and different end conditions, okay? So that's that video done there, guys, on the whistle. Uh, what I would advise you to do now is whatever folder you're saving your stuff in, you save it into that, okay? So hope you found it helpful, guys. That's the video complete.